Welcome to section 3.9 and 3.10a. All right, general people, in this lecture, I want to talk about limiting reagent. Now, before I get into the subject, I want to use an everyday example to try to explain this concept. I think a lot of students are intimidated by this process, so I want to show you that you can actually do these types of problems and not only can you do these types of problems, but you can do them in your head. So what I'm going to do is give you a chemical equation. Now, instead of using chemicals, I'm going to give you a recipe, which is exactly what a chemical equation is. So here's my recipe for a sandwich, a really terrible sandwich. So my recipe calls for two pieces of bread. I'm going to put one piece of ham, and this is going to yield and get me a sandwich. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and look into my pantry. And in my pantry, I have 14 pieces of bread, I'll check my fridge, and I have eight pieces of ham. So in your head, real quick, tell me how many sandwiches can I make? Hopefully you came up with the number of seven. Now tell me, what was the limiting item, or what was the item that I ran out that stopped my sandwich production? Hopefully you guys said bread, and lastly, what do I have left over? Hopefully what you guys determined is that you have one piece of ham left over. What I want to make note is, you guys did a limiting reagent problem all in your head. You guys were able to tell me what the limiting reagent was, what the theoretical yield was, and what was the leftover amount of reactants. Let's explicitly look at the thought process that might have gone through your head. All right, so we're gonna start out with my recipe, two breads plus one ham plus one sandwich. Looking in my fridge and in my pantry, I had 14 pieces of bread and eight pieces of ham. So what you guys might have done is you can say that you had 14 pieces of bread and that you know to make one sandwich, you need two pieces of bread. And so all you did was look at the stoichiometric coefficients in your equation. You see that you have a two to one ratio and then we can go ahead and put that two to one ratio, the mole fraction inside this kind of interpretation. So if I go ahead and do this, the breads cancel out. And what you can say is that if you had an unlimited amount of ham, the maximum amount of sandwiches you can make is seven sandwiches. Now you can do the same thing for your other ingredient or your other reactant. You had eight pieces of ham, and you know that to make one sandwich, you're going to need one piece of ham. So again, the hams cancel out. And so again, if you had eight pieces of ham and an unlimited amount of bread, you would be able to make eight sandwiches. Now, what we can see from this interpretation, is I cannot make the eighth sandwich. Even though I have enough ham, I don't have enough bread to make that eighth sandwich. So what this means is that I am limited by the amount of bread that I have. So this is my limiting reagent. This right here is the maximum amount of product I can make. So we're gonna call this the theoretical yield. And the last question that I asked you guys is that how many pieces of ham did you have left over? Well, to calculate the leftover, what I can say is that the leftover is the amount that I started out with minus the amount that I used. And so in this case, I started out with eight pieces of ham. Now what I wanna know is how much ham did I use? Well, I know my theoretical yield is seven sandwiches. That's the most amount of sandwiches I can make. And to make those seven sandwiches, I can look at my chemical equation. What I'll note is to make one sandwich, I need one piece of ham. So to make these seven sandwiches, I will need seven pieces of ham. So this is the amount that I will use creating my sandwiches, or the amount that I will use. And so what we see 
is the amount that I have left over, well, that's going to be 8 minus 7, or one piece of ham. So if you ever get tripped up by a limiting reagent problem, what I want you to do is think of this example. You want to follow the same kind of steps that we just did. The only thing is, is I don't want you to get intimidated when I start using chemical compounds. Now, a limiting reagent analysis is very important, especially in industrial processes. If you work for a chemical plant, they're going to run reactions. And the last thing they want to do is waste chemical. Now, if they have an unequal amount of chemicals that they put into a reaction, well, they want to make sure that their limiting reagent is the most expensive chemical. They don't want to waste something that is valuable to them. So that's why they go ahead and run these calculations. Also, it helps to figure out how much product they will make. So let's go ahead and run through some limiting reagent problems. So here's the reaction that I'm going to give you. 4 moles of aluminum plus 3 moles of oxygen is going to get you 2 moles of aluminum oxide. Now what I'm going to say is that you have 1 mole of aluminum and 1 mole of oxygen. Can I even get any aluminum oxide to be produced? So to answer this question is yes, of course I can make some aluminum oxide. What I want you to note is that I was a little bit tricksy when reading this equation. I read it the pretty standard way where I said that 4 moles of aluminum is going to react with 3 moles of oxygen. But remember what this chemical reaction is. It is 4 molecules of aluminum reacting with 3 molecules of oxygen. And remember, a mole equals 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So it is possible to have half a mole. It's possible to have 0 0.0001 mole. That's a ton of molecules. So I'm going to go ahead and make this product. Next, what I want you guys to do is I want you to tell me which is the limiting reagent. All right, to look at my limiting reagent, I'm going to look at my two reagents. So again, this is the formula up here. And the formula is a recipe. I am giving you one mole of aluminum and one mole of oxygen. So this is the stuff in the bottle when you walk into lab. Now we're going to use the stoichiometric coefficient and come up with mole fractions. So what I see is to make two moles of aluminum oxide, I'm going to have to use four moles of aluminum. If I do this calculation out, what I get is 0 0.5 moles of aluminum oxide. I'm going to do the same type of interpretation with oxygen. For oxygen, I'm going to need 3 moles of oxygen gas to make 2 moles of Al2O3. Again, I'm just looking at the stoichiometric coefficients in my chemical formula. If I go ahead and do the math here, I get 0 0.67 moles of Al2O3. The next thing I want to do is I want to look at which produced the least amount of product. Since this made the least amount of product, what that means is as soon as I make 0.5 moles of aluminum 2O3, I run out of aluminum. So I cannot get to this 0.67. So that means that my aluminum is my limiting reagent. That also means that my theoretical yield, or the maximum amount of product that I can make, is 0.5 moles of aluminum oxide. All right, let's do one more quiz question. So you're going to have to use the answer from the previous quiz question to answer this. What I want you to tell me is how much oxygen was left over. So remember, aluminum was the limiting reagent. So oxygen is my reagent in excess. All right, gentle people, remember what I told you with my sandwich analogy. I told you the leftover amount is going to equal the amount that you started out with minus the amount that you used. So we know the amount that we started out with was one mole of O2. So let's go ahead and try to figure out the amount that we used. So based on the last quiz, we know 
that we are going to make 0.5 moles of aluminum oxide. I want to know how much oxygen I will need to make that much. So what I can see is that for every two moles of Al2O3, I'm going to need three moles of O2. Again, looking at the stoichiometric coefficients. If I do this calculation out, I get 0 0.75 moles of O2. So that's going to be the amount that I'm going to use during the course of this reaction. So minus 0 0.75 moles of O2. And what we get is 1 minus 0.75. Well, that gets us 0 0.25 moles of O2. All right, Chem 1A, I hope that made sense. And remember to stay safe.